What's up, everybody? Welcome to season two of The Recess. I'm your boy, Coach E, OF Guru here, man. I got a very, very special guest to kick off season two of The Recess. I got my main man, Rob Parker. But before we get into that, The Recess is a podcast dedicated to shining light on urban baseball and the wonderful things going on around the country with urban baseball. Um, so I'm going to jump right into this thing. I got my main man. He needs no introduction, Rob Parker. He's a baseball advocate, MLB lover, you know, he's a Hall of Fame voter. He's on everybody's freaking radio station in the morning, Fox Sports. He was on ESPN, ABC. He's, he's been all over the place. I'm going to let him give you guys who don't know, especially my young um, audience, a little bit of an introduction about himself. Um, so, Rob, can you talk us through your sports journalism career and how you got to the point you are right now? Well, Coach E, thanks for having me. It's a privilege. We got to meet in Chicago this past summer, and that was real cool. Um, but I'll tell you, and I'm loving all the stuff that you're doing in the community. I think it's great. We need more people like you out there. But uh, I, I grew up in Jamaica, Queens, uh, and and I was a baseball player. I mean, I, I wanted to play first base for the New York Mets. That was my dream as a kid. And... Uh, you know, you realize and you find out you're not that good. You know what I mean? And I had to fight. Okay. I love baseball. I wish I could play it, but I'm not that good. And then I started saying, well, um, what could I do if I don't make it as a baseball player? And I had a teacher when I was in second grade and you're a teacher and you understand the importance. And my teacher was, uh, her name was Miss Noble in second grade. You're seven years old in second grade. And this woman was a young teacher. She pulled me aside from the class and she said, Robert, you're an excellent writer. And when you grow up, you should be a writer. I mean, I'll never forget those words. So then it was like, well, if I don't make it as a baseball player, maybe I can make it as a sports writer. I used to read when I was nine years old, I read three newspapers a day. Imagine a nine year old kid cover to cover. I read all, I was just a big reader. I love to write. And then there was a TV show to, that was on, on reruns in New York called the odd couple with Jack Klugman and Tony Randall. One guy was a sports writer. The other guy, a sloppy sports writer. The other guy was a finicky clean photographer and they lived together, shared an apartment in New York. Loved the show. And I was like Oscar Madison. That was Jack Klugman's character's name. Um, Oscar Madison, I was like, he has the greatest job in the world. He gets to cover sports, travel the country, eat free food, get in the game for free. I was like, that's what I want to do if I can't make it. So I was that kid. I was everybody in the neighborhood wanted to be a doctor and a lawyer and an insurance salesman. And I was like, I want to be a newspaper columnist. I want to have my picture in the paper. That's what I was saying when I was nine years old. So that was my dream. And I want to share one other story real quick before we move on. But I was 16 years old and I was in high school and we had a high school newspaper called the Beeline. And it took forever to come out back then. It was like the process took so long. So you would write a story in the fall about the basketball team. By the time the paper came out, it was baseball season. So <laughs> I was like, man, you know, like this is ridiculous. Like it takes too long. So I went to the principal. I said, I got an idea. I want to start an all sports newspaper that comes out on time every month. And the principal looked at me, old guy was like, no, we're not doing that. The kids are going to throw it on the ground as garbage. Plus we don't have money for the printing. And I just thought to myself, here's a 16 year old kid talking about journalism and wanting to start a newspaper. And this educator is like dousing my dream you know, instantly and telling me, no, the kids are going to throw it on the ground. But I wasn't discouraged. And what I decided to do, I said to him, I said, if I raise the money to, to, to pay for the printing, will you let me start the paper? And he said, if you have the money for that, yes, you can start the paper. I went home, sat at my typewriter. Coach, you know what a typewriter is? You ever see one of those? You know? Yeah, I was, I was on the last um, age bracket to see those. Okay, so you know what a typewriter, everybody else is Googling it. What's a typewriter? Okay. <laughs> so I go home 
and I get on my typewriter at the kitchen table, I'm 16 years old, and I write three letters. One to the publisher of the New York Times, one to the publisher of the New York Post, and one to the publisher of the Daily News in New York. The Daily News was my favorite paper. I didn't get a response. The New York Times wrote me a letter. They said it's against their company policy to help other people start newspapers. I'm like, I'm 16. How am I going to be in competition with the New York Times? I can't believe somebody wrote a 16-year-old that letter. But then the last letter that I sent out was to the New York Post and the publisher. The publisher of the New York Post at that time was Rupert Murdoch. You know that name? Unfamiliar. Rupert Murdoch is the owner of Fox. Television, wow. Fox, News Channel, all everything Fox. Okay. Back then, he was a newspaper publisher. Coach E, Rupert Murdoch's office, I sent a letter to him, addressed to him to his office, sent me a check for $50 to start my newspaper when I was in high school. And, of course, I worked for Fox. Man, the irony in that. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said that for all the college and high school audience right now. It started with a $50 check, and... He's in his promising career. So that's going to bring me kind of to my um, next talking point or question. I have a, you know, we want to phrase this thing. Um, so you recently launched MLBbro.com, right? I was pumped up about it. My friends were pumped up about it. You know, a bro you need to know. Um, you know, I saw my main man, T.A. Tim Anderson. Shout out to T.A. You know, White Sox is get a World Series championship. You know, I know you, you guys are New York and L.A. guys, but Chicago, we're going to do it. But um, just can you just talk to the audience of how you came up with the idea of MLB Bro and uh, also the next things coming down the pipeline for MLB Bro. Now we're coming to the um, soon to be off season. Yeah, this is a labor of love, something I always had an idea about. Like, you know, like I look at MLBbro.com and we cover only black and brown players. That's all we cover. Whatever they're doing, we're all over it. And we usually do two written pieces and two videos every day. And the whole premise of this thing was, um, it, it to me, is like undefeated is to ESPN.com. So I look at it as like an offshoot. We don't cover games and stuff like that. That's not what we do. We do features and let you know about the black players who are in the league, what they're doing, who they are, where they come came from, their struggle, their hustle, whatever it is, what swag or flavor they bring to the game. And the response has been tremendous from players. You know, we were at the All-Star game in Denver. We covered it. And the black players who were there, they all embraced us. They all love what we're doing and what we're trying to get out there. Because, um, you know, the black community has kind of, you know, went astray a little bit and forgot about the roots of, of baseball and what it means to our community. This is our game. We came late to the table in the major leagues, but go look at the record books. We're all over it. And some of the greatest players who ever played were black. So we have a rich history. For some reason, you know, AAU coaches started taking all the athletes and selling them the NBA dream and NFL dream. And that was it. And um, I, 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 it's a mistake. We, we belong in all these sports. I'm not saying we're going to be 50% of Major League Baseball or anything like that. We only make up 13% of the population. But the numbers are getting better, and I hope that they continue to grow as people understand. And if you have an AAU coach or somebody out there telling you you need to pour all your energy into one thing in order to, to uh, achieve, they're, they're misleading you. Some of the greatest athletes who have ever played anything were multiple sport athletes. And Kyler Murray, just what, two or three years ago, was the first overall pick. Yep. And the first player to be drafted in the first round in the NFL and Major League Baseball. So this is recent that he was able to play two sports, excel at both, and have an option. So stop feeding the kids this whole, you got to play basketball 24-7 365. No, you don't. No, you don't. And leave yourself open. In the NBA, they only give out 30 guaranteed contracts a year. 
3-0. Don't limit yourself. I, I hope y'all listening. You know, as um, the old time Baptist preachers say, you know, sometimes, Rob, you got to say a little louder for the people in the back, you know. Please make sure, you know, and I'm in Chicago, the mecca of high school basketball, and I see it all the time. We recently just had a kid, you know, I'm not going to for privacy, right? We recently had a kid text me talking about, I don't want to play baseball anymore, and he's, he's 6'4", you know, he's 6'4", can swing it, throw upper 80s, and now, you know, he's a this seven or eighth guy because the coach said he needs him. You know, like, and I don't even want to get into that. We'll be, we'll be on this all day, you know, all night, right. I should say. Um, so I'm going to kind of switch gears, right? Um, you know, we mentioned the, um, stats with black and brown players representing the MLB. So what's your personal feelings on the state of MLB baseball? Is MLB headed in the right direction? I, I think it is. There's a slew of players coming up and we've seen it this year and covering, you know, covering the league and all the black and brown players who have come up and who are coming up and, uh, you know, you got some stars, Tristan McKenzie in Cleveland. This dude is a stud, you know, tall, slim, but he can throw, man. He's, oh, yeah. a, he's a killer. And then, uh, you know, some other players who have had some good, good starts and Badu in Detroit, you remember, got off to that hot start, struggled a little bit, but came back. Found Has had a solid rookie year. So there's Found a lot place. of good things going on. We saw... Um, the Field of Dreams game, you know, I, I wrote a column about it. I said, in the whitest and the corniest place, <laughs> brothers stole the show. Because hey. who was it? It was it was Aaron Judge, two-run home run, Stanton with a two-run home run to tie the game, and then T.A. The walked yeah. off. I, yeah. I mean, come on, man. That was a beautiful – you know that. Yeah. I, I loved every minute of that, and and – Brothers had a big part in that, making that a fantastic night. It was the most watched regular season baseball game in 16 years. And, and, and I got to give a quick shout out because the youth organizations, Colorado White Sox Ace Program and a Harlem program, they got down. It was a very good game. And those are all black and brown kids that played before the big league. So I, that's what I was impressed by. And all the players were well-polished, well-coached. So, Big ups to Harlem and the Chicago White Sox Ace Program. Um, one of them young boys went a yard in the corn with the Ace Program too. So it was, it was the, the long ball. Chicks dig the long ball. You know it. That's impressive right there. That was, that was some night though, man. I, I was in the edge of my seat. What a what a finish to the, to that. But it was great. But I, I but I think I think baseball's, you know, about 15, 20 years ago, baseball started a lot of uh, academies in Latin America. And it was more about economics. Like they didn't want to pay the kids in the United States up front. They have agents, they lawyers, they go, they take these kids in uh, Latin America, they put them in dormitories, give the parents almost, you know, a small amount of money. Mm -hmm. And the kids play ball every day and get three meals a day. And that's all they do. Baseball will pay you when you make it. The problem is there were guys who were, you know, being bust and they didn't want to pay these guys up front. So this is really what happened. And so you reap what you sow. If you have academies in Latin America, where do you think the player is going to come from? They they really outsource the jobs. Yeah. And uh, and that doesn't that's not taking anything away from Latin players because they are great players as well as you know uh, and have their own storied history and so many great players. And the difference between, you know, us and them is that for the most part, it's either soccer or baseball for them. They don't play basketball, really, and they don't play football. You know, and 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 our people are spread out amongst those um, all three. Um, but we have a long tradition with baseball. I think baseball has made a lot of strides uh, in the RBI program and these other things, the Hank Aaron Invitational they have yep. down at Bureau Beach, which is a big success and a lot of kids from all over the country. So I, I'm... You know, it's not perfect, but baseball's getting there. Thank you for that. Um, I got to put you on a – I heard you mention, you know, Stanton, and I heard you mention Aaron Judge. Okay, on this one, give me your favorite baseball player of all time and your favorite baseball player of today's time. All right, so just as I was getting into journalism, 
Uh, which is crazy because, you know, as soon as I got into it and became a sports writer, you know, I lost my fandom. I don't root for teams or anything like that anymore. You know, for a long time, I've been doing this for 35 years, but the guy right before I got into the business heavy was Daryl Strawberry. Even though I'm not left-handed, nobody had a prettier swing than that dude. And I know there's a lot of other great players, but to me, growing up in New York, and, you know, spending my childhood at Shea Stadium. And it was when Strawberry and Gooden finally came to the Mets that they blossomed into must-see TV, both of those guys. So they had the two biggest black stars in baseball at that time. And, you know, Strawberry was an all-star nine times, five times in a row starting in the outfield. I mean, monster home runs. I can still remember a home run he hit off of a lefty Chuck uh, – um, uh, Ken Daly of the Cardinals off the scoreboard of the old Bush stadium. I just off, off a lefty. It was just like, <laughs> I still remember that to this day. Um, so it was strawberry. And today um, there's a couple guys um, that I like to watch. Uh, love Tim Anderson. No doubt. Swag can play about winning, love everything that he's about. Uh, love watching Judge and Stanton, both of those guys, just their power, what they do. And the other guy who's Latin is Fernando Tatis. I, 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 think, I think he is, he's must see too. And I know Shohei Otani is having an unbelievable season like we've never seen, but I'm telling you, there's something about Tatis and as you know, if you looked at his numbers, his first 162 games, he compiled better stats than anybody who's ever played the game. It, hands down. Hands down. Rob, thank you so much for joining me on The Recess. Um, Rob, can you drop your website for MLB Bro? Um, if someone wanted to get in contact with one of your writers on MLB Bro, um, shout out you guys future journalist, you know, or somebody who just wants to say, hey, I want to learn more about MLB history. Yep. You go to MLBbro.com. You can also check out my website, get Rob, G-E-T-R-O-B-B-E-D.com uh, on there. Um, I'm on Fox Sports Radio. I write for Deadspin. You know, so on GetRob.com, you can see all the different places and outlets that I'm in. Uh, but uh, Coach E, I appreciate the vine, you know, the Put me out there and uh, keep doing what you're doing in the city with the kids. I love it. And uh, much success and to you and yours. Thank you so much, Rob. It means so much to me. Um, make sure if you're watching right now. Take time. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you go to MLBbro.com. Subscribe to their website. You just drop everything on you. Make sure you follow them on IG. Rob Parker, make sure you follow Coach E or Guru. Share and tag this with somebody that loves baseball. For those watching, welcome to season two of The Recess. We'll check in with you next week. All right, I'm Coach E. Rob Parker signing off.